Shabbat Shalom, everyone. I'm Moray Matan, Pastor Matt McEwen, and it's great to be with you for another edition of Treasures of the Torah. This week we're in Parashat Vayigash, and we get the big reveal. Now, what do I mean by that? This is when Joseph reveals himself to his brothers. Have you ever seen one of those reality shows where a big reveal takes place? Like on shows uh, such as The Voice, where the judges have their backs turned to a singer, and the singer begins to sing, and they have the option to turn their chair around, and then we have the reveal of who this person is. There's been another singing show that has become popular in my country lately called The Masked Singer. I haven't seen the show, but I've seen a couple of clips online where someone is singing, but they're in an elaborate costume that hides their identity, so you have no idea who it is. And it could be a celebrity, it could be a, a famous artist or an athlete. No one really knows until the person reveals themselves by taking off their mask, by taking off the big helmet that they are wearing. This is sort of what happened with Joseph and his brothers. It's like he was in a costume compared to when they had last saw him. He was dressed as an Egyptian. Now to Joseph, it would not have been a costume. It would have been normal everyday dress, because after all, he had spent years in Egypt. He had become like an Egyptian, except he kept faithful to the God of Israel and did not bow down to the Egyptian, Egyptian idols. Now, we have something wonderful that comes to us from the Bait Halevi. Once again, I'm in this collection of commentaries called Wellspring of Torah that we've been going through this Torah cycle. Here is the verse we're going to focus on today, chapter 45 of Genesis, verse 3. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? And his brothers could not answer him because they were frightened in his presence. Now, this particular commentary that I'm going to read to you today is a little more lengthy than usual, so bear with me as I read this to us. We are told that the brothers became frightened when Joseph made himself known to them. How could Joseph's words be construed as a rebuke to his brothers? Actually, the Hebrew word tochacha, rebuke, implies the act of convincing or persuasion, i.e., of causing the person to whom the reproof is addressed to realize that he has done wrong. This is exactly what Joseph did when he made himself known to his brothers. By recalling to them the words they, him, they themselves had spoken, he persuaded them that they had sinned. Judah had wanted to awaken compassion in Joseph for his aged father, pleading that the old man would die of grief if Benjamin was not returned to him. With this in mind, Joseph now said, I am Joseph, the brother whom you sold into slavery. Is my father still alive? If it did not occur to you when you sold me into slavery that it would kill my father, why are you so worried about him now? What a hurtful statement that is. You weren't so worried if the father, your father, would die of grief if you sold me into slavery, or said I was dead as you did. If he managed to withstand the heartbreaking grief you caused him when you took me away from him, he certainly will be able to survive the loss of Benjamin. Thus, Joseph refuted the arguments of his brothers with their own words. There lay his rebuke, and this is why the brothers grew frightened and they were unable to answer him. A similar rebuke will be administered to all people in the days to come, and by none other than God himself. Judgment Day, when all humanity will be judged, will also be a day of rebuke in which the heavenly judge will cause humanity to realize the wickedness of their ways. When you failed to give charity, people will be told, you pleaded the excuse that you had difficulty making ends meet. But if this were indeed so, how is it that you had enough money to spend on amusements and pleasures? In this manner, each person will be reprimanded in accordance with his or her own deeds. God will reveal to each person how he contradicted himself and then it will not be too easy for anyone to find an excuse for past conduct. There's so much meat in this particular commentary for this week. It's interesting that Jacob's heart 
was not broken when Joseph was taken away. And the sages of Israel give us a clue that Jacob knew deep in his heart that Joseph was not dead. In fact, when he sent his other sons away to get provisions, the Bible says that he knew there was grain, he knew there was food in Egypt, and he, he sent them there. There's a word that's used there in the Hebrew of that verse, and the word is bar, which by all accounts, if we're reading it literally, shouldn't be there. The word bar is Aramaic for son. He knows that his son is there. This is very interesting to us, and I think sometimes this is true in the lives of people that we know. We've heard on the news or from some anecdote or maybe in a book or a show where a mother or a father just knew that their child was not dead. They held out hope. They said they could somehow just feel it. They, they knew that they were not lost forever. Sometimes this is the case. It apparently was with Jacob. Now, what's so interesting here is this word tochacha, the rebuke. Moses gives us an example that when you reprove your brother, that you give him the benefit of the doubt, that you look at the merits instead of the deficits, that you judge your opponent favorably. We have to look at our motivation. Do we want to rebuke someone just to tell them how bad they are, how bad the thing they did was? Is it to satisfy some vengeful spirit within us? Do we have a desire to really have someone get what's coming to them or to get what they deserve? Are we carrying out justice on our own terms by making ourselves feel better by telling someone that they're bad? That's not what this Hebrew word for rebuke is. As we said, it implies the act of convincing or persuasion. When we, in anger, yell at someone for the awful thing that they did, and you made me feel this way, and here it is, and you're, you're just being, you're being as rude as they were to you, the purpose of you doing that is not for the person to repent. It's for you to make them feel badly about what they did. Now, to help someone realize that they've sinned and to convince them to repent or give them a persuasive argument to repent is totally different than I want to make you feel bad. I want to make you feel as bad as you made me feel. That's not the correct motivation, and that's not giving your brother or sister the benefit of the doubt. Moses, our teacher, would not be very happy with us if he saw that. So, this idea of rebuke. It seems that for a couple of weeks we've been talking about difficult things. In last week's Torah portion, we talked about giving bad or disappointing news and how we have to have the courage to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, we sometimes have to have the courage to rebuke someone, but our motivation must be looking at them in an eternal sense. Our motivation must be that they repent and turn back to God, not that they feel badly for what they've done. Most of the time, I heard someone say this years and years ago, I can't remember who, but sometimes there's nothing that you could say to someone that is any worse or more punishing than what their own heart and mind and conscience will say to them as they lay in bed at night. I think that's true. I think sometimes we have a way of punishing ourselves. And when we approach someone who has done wrong, maybe we should think, maybe we should give them the benefit of, doubt, of the doubt that they possibly already feel bad about what they've done. They already realize. And if they don't, it is this act of tochacha where we can rebuke, but in a way that is persuading them to repent, convincing them to turn back to God. This is the right motivation. This is the reason why we should do this particular act of rebuke. Joseph did it well. He, he did it very well. We can see that when he's falsely accused, when he's thrown in prison, when he's forgotten in prison for two extra years, it's amazing the patience that we see in the character of Joseph. It really is. And that reminds us of who he prefigures. 
Mashiach ben Yosef, Messiah, son of Joseph, our suffering servant, who is patient, who rebukes us, who disciplines us like a good parent does, and always leaves room for repentance. Thank you for joining me again this week. I wish you all the best for you and your family. If you'd like to study with me and the other teachers and rabbis in the school where I graduated, you can go to shuvu.tv and fill out an application there to join the largest Messianic Jewish yeshiva in the world. Thank you so much. Shabbat Shalom.